Hey, this is Danny with dannyburble.com, also growwealthwithin.com. And this is part three of my little challenge for what are all the things you could find to do with a simple knot. And uh, I'm in the middle of COVID-19, so we're quarantining, hence the hair. And originally I thought it'd just be a fun little distraction to just brainstorm and find out all the things I could do with a simple knot. Like for example, just doubling up the rope and tying a knot, which would make a loop. Um, but it turned into a lot more. It turned into kind of a, a rope 101 as I realized I was solving all the problems I normally solve when camping with a very simple knot. So I'd like to walk you through all the solutions I found in my last video, but actually take the steps to show you how they were tied. So check it out. There is one knot that I realized I forgot, which I'll tell you at the end of the video. Oh, hey, and one other thing, I went and looked up the names of some of the knots that I had discovered or explored, and I realized I was using the phrase half hitch when I meant to say quick release. So just so you know, I'm going to use the wrong word there, and I'll put some text on the screen every time I do, just so you know. You know, when I, when I first discovered rope, like when you're a kid, you don't really know what you're doing, and instead of tying the right knot, you just tie a lot of knots. In fact, I have a friend who works here on the Strip, and the show that he works at, they do like stage lighting and things like that. They have a, a, a joke phrase that if you can't tie a knot, tie a lot. And in some cases that'll work, in some cases it won't. But I remember just as a kid not quite getting it, and even as an adult, finding myself in situations where I need, I need to tie this thing and it's not working. Uh, so I thought maybe I'll just take a moment and just go through all the the things I could possibly come up with to, to use a regular knot, nothing fancy. So here's a knot. So I'm gonna start with how to tie it and I'm gonna go kind of fast, make a loop, pull the end through, boom, there's a knot. Like, uh, not complicated, but I'm gonna show you different ways to tie it because it later on it, it makes it more useful. So again, make a loop, pull it through, there you go. Another way to do it is to make a pistol and come up from the bottom and now make the loop around your finger use your thumb to hold it and pass this piece of rope through and replace your finger and as you pull it's going to slip right off your finger so I'll do that again pistol give me more room here pistol around and pull it off your finger the third way you'll want a little bit of extra slack and you're just gonna make a loop like this and grab, and you're gonna pull, pull it through. When you're close to the end, it looks like this. And that's nice because you can do it with one hand. What's nice about a knot is that it just, it's gonna cinch down. It might move a little bit while it's cinching down, but once it's cinched, it's gonna stay there. And what, that's useful as something like a stopper knot. Um, for example, uh, if I was pulling this through something and I got to the stopper knot, it would keep it from going any further. Also, uh, I mean, you see these used a lot with like climbing ropes, so knots into a rope so you have something to hold on to. Of course, it'd be a rope probably a lot thicker than this one. But a knot in a piece of rope is useful because it doesn't move and because it's it's thicker than the rope itself so it can create that stopping motion. So here's another quick use for a simple knot. Just tie it in the end of your rope so the frayed end doesn't take over the whole rope. Not rocket science here, so yeah. What if you don't pull all the way through? So what if you make your loop and you pull like this? So I've made my knot, but I didn't pull all the rope through. And what that does is it creates this loop that will change, change shape when you pull on it. And if you keep pulling, it will just completely pop out and be gone. Seems useless at first, but I'm going to start using that a lot. So that is a really, really handy thing to know, is that you can make that loop. And the reason is, say for example, you, you do a bunch of stuff and you finish with a knot. Later on... Like this is going to get a lot of tension. It's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. Later on, you're going to try to open this knot and it's going to be a real pain in the butt. Instead, if you just don't pull all the way through, as tight as I can make this, I can still always just pull it out. 
So it's a, instead of ending your ties with a knot, end your ties with this loop. So if you look at this, right, there's the knot. If I put this knot on something, it's a lot like tying your shoes, right? That first step in tying your shoes is that you take the two ends and you, you flip them around each other and you give it a pull. And that's, that's not gonna hold, right? Just like your shoes, that first is not gonna hold. So the trick here is you make a knot and you tie a second knot. So this here is a granny knot. I did the same simple knot twice and they don't hold very well. They, I mean, and it's because they kind of have a twist to them just naturally. But when you tie that first knot, instead of tying the second knot the same way, if you go in the opposite direction, you make a mirror image of the first knot and it comes together really nicely and creates a square knot. And that's much nicer than a granny knot. So if you're tying knots and they don't seem to be holding, look at them and see, are they, are they symmetrical? And if they're not symmetrical, tie the second knot in the opposite direction and you'll get a square knot, which will work a lot nicer. So while I'm here talking about square knots and talking about tying shoes, the concept we use to tie our shoes is basically I'm tying a knot and I'm not pulling all the way through here so I can make a half hitch, right? And that's basically like half the bow for your shoes. You can make the full bow by literally taking two loops, two loops, and tying those into a knot. This rope's a little thick for this. So now I've created a knot <clears throat> and it's literally like a half, two half hitches almost. And when I pull, they're going to come completely undone. So that's basically how we tie our shoes. It, we're just making a knot, but before we make the knot, we make these two, two loops. And then the, tie a knot with the loops. And then that's how we get a bow for our shoes. So a bow is nothing more than a simple knot. It just happens to be two loops that you're making the knot with. So I want to show you a really simple tie. Um, one of the mistakes I, I made a lot when I was first playing with rope was I would tie a knot like right here. I'd tie a knot like this. And I would tie a bunch I would just keep tying, and there you go. That works, right? So the trick here is I'm, I've got weight on the line, and it makes it hard to, to do any of that tying. So instead of just tying the knot like that, use the rope itself to your advantage and go around whatever it is a few times, right? and then tie a knot. Right, like this knot is loose, you can see it's loose. But when I pull on this, it's really not going anywhere because it's using all these wraps to my advantage. So when you're using simple knots, just use more, more turns, that's all. Again, the thing I want to encourage you to do is make half hitches. So instead of making a full knot, just make a loop and leave that tail. So this knot is tight, but if I pull on the tail, I can get it to come out. And that's useful. So if I were to tie something here, right, and let's just say nothing fancy here, right? If I were to tie this knot, instead of doing the knot, there you go. So do that half hitch, right? So now it's holding. Right, I'm pulling pretty hard on that. But there's a loop here. So when you're done with it, all you have to do is pull this and it pops out, right? And the, the amount of pressure that was put on the system doesn't affect the fact that you can just pull that right out. And now you can just undo it. Um, a lot of times people tie a knot for the last thing and the pressure on the system makes the knot tighter and tighter and tighter and then they can't get it undone.
So get in the habit of ending whatever you're doing with a half hitch. Okay, I'm gonna show you a slip knot. And that's basically when you take, when you tie a knot on the piece of rope that you, you've already started with. So I've just tied this knot to this, to this piece of rope. And I've, it creates a loop and it slips. Um, it's, it's pretty nice. The problem is this knot tends to roll over. So as I pull, and I want to point out that I'm pulling the, the load line, not, I'm not the working end, but the load, and that's making it get smaller. But what happens is, watch the knot change shape. Did you see that? It just rolled right over. If I didn't have this extra little bit here, it probably would pull all the way through. And that's what happens to people. So um, if you, say, tied a hammock up or something with that, it would, it could probably just fall down. Um, but it's easily fixed, right? And all you do is you just tie one more knot here in the end. And what this is going to do is it, it functions as a stopper knot. So this won't slide through. So when I put it back on my arm again, this time the knot doesn't roll over, regardless of how hard I'm pulling. And that's the thing that a lot of people are missing. When you're just when you're tying a rope around something and you're tying it and it seems like it's coming undone, sometimes all you need to do is just tie a stopper knot. And then now it can't get through and it'll just hold. So another interesting thing is when you tie a slip knot. Right, this is going to slip all the way down to there. Oh, it's going to go as far as it can. So if you want it to stop, just tie a stopper knot. For example, I'm just going to tie a knot in this rope. So I have a knot. Then I'm going to pass it around. So now I have a slip knot and a stopper knot. So when I pull on this, it's going to reach a point where it won't go any further. So again, that's sometimes what people are looking for. Um, this, this could be nice for like a dog leash. For example, I remember pulling over in the middle of traffic one time because there was a dog running around the road and we just needed to kind of get the dog and then keep the dogs long enough to get it to its owner again. And so a piece of rope like this would be great, but you don't want it to slip all the way down and choke the dog. So if you just put a, uh, a knot like this, a stopper knot, now it'll go so far and you're not choking the dog. You can also put a knot on this end, um, like this, which now you can control how far this knot goes. So it's not gonna come completely off and it's not gonna go completely on. Again, it's it's amazing, like you, all these little, all these knots, they're just, they're all so simple. Um, and once you start learning how to combine them, as situations arises, you'll realize, oh wait, I know I know how to do that. Fold the rope over, make a loop. This is called a bite. I use the pistol grip here and make a knot with the loop. So you're gonna go around and through. And the reason I used the pistol grip was because it makes a nice, clean knot. There's no twists. What's nice about this loop is that it's it's solid it's not going to change shape this knot's not going to slide you can pull here you can use a bunch of these loops in succession sometimes i'll use something like this in my tent to just hang things from right so useful that way i go camping a lot and sometimes you just need to hang stuff in your tent so if you just make if you double back like find the middle of your rope and then double it back and make a knot, and then just make a couple more. So just keep making knots, right? And if you hang this somewhere, what you've created is, you've created all these loops. So now you can hang things on these loops, right? And they're, they're, they can only go so far. Um, if you just hang a piece of rope and you start attaching things to a piece of rope, it basically just sags in the center and everything all bunches up to the center. But if you've got some knots in it, they don't, you don't even have to double up the rope. Even if it's just a simple one line of rope and with knots in it, when you attach stuff, they will slide, they'll hit the knot and they'll stop. So this is a nice, a nice easy way to just organize your tent and all the things you might hang. You can attach them here. You can attach them on both sides. So you can have two things attached. You can also attach them like around a knot like this, so it'll, it'll be a little more uh, stationary. 
So yeah, simple, fast, easy. I also found this useful. So my car has a, a lie for a roof rack. Um, from the dealer stock, the roof rack is useless, but you don't realize that until you try to use it. It doesn't really have things to attach rope to. It doesn't have fixed points. So um, the way to solve it, if this is my car and that's forward, if you put this structure down the roof on each side, now you have all these loops to tie things to. So you put the loops on both sides and then you zigzag across to hold down whatever it is. So, and again, this is just a simple knot. So this knot right here, so we have a, we have a knot, we have a loop. This is nice, um, but this loop you can see is not attached to anything. I can put it over something like that, right? But if I wanted to attach it to this, I really don't have, yeah. So to do that, we do something called a retrace. And this is something that we do with climbing ropes. When we attach ropes to our harnesses, we tie a figure eight and then we do a retrace. So I'm gonna tie a knot very loosely, just like that. Go around something. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retrace this line back through with this end. So I'm just gonna go right where it was. Go all the way around, all the way around. Right. So now I've got the same concept. I've just got a knot in the end of this in this in this rope, and put the loops around something, and that's not going to collapse. All right. Next, I'm going to show you a trucker's hitch. The concept here is that you've got like heavy weight, like maybe this end is already tied to something, and you want to tie it here, but there's there's tension on the line. It's a pain in the butt, and you want to tie it down tight because it's in the back of your truck or your bed or something like that. Very simple. Just make a quick loop. So a knot, simple knot, makes a loop go around whatever it is and like I said this this line has tension on it so just trying to fiddle here and make a knot is, is, is difficult but if you pass this through this loop now you've got something to pull with it's like basically like a lever so it makes it really easy to, to get really tight tension on the line and when you have it where you want it you just pinch right there and all you do here where you pinched is you just make a knot Right? And that's going to hold it all. But again, I'm going to encourage you to not end things with knots, but to end them with half hitches. So just don't pull the knot all the way through and you have this nice big loop. So now, there you go. You see it tightening around the loop, right? But it's, it's not going anywhere any further. And when you're done, you just pull this and the whole thing will come undone. Another way to make that trucker's hitch is with this other type of loop that we did. Right, so that's a half hitch. And if I pull on it, it's going to disappear. So this time, that this loop just got smaller, right? And it's the same deal. You'll pull here to make it as tight as you want, and then you'll pinch, and then you'll create a half hitch. There you go. Cool. So I, I made a knot that I didn't pull all the way through, which was a half hitch, went around, made another one, and there you go. So things you can do with a simple knot. And what's nice about this one is you pop this and, and it, so your line is pretty clean pretty quickly. All right, this next knot is sort of like a bow line. Um, but it's not and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to tie a bowline real quick uh, even just because the bowline is basically better so a bowline looks like this so you go around something you make a loop this end the working end comes up through the through the loop around the load line and back through the loop and then when you pull it all tight what you have is you've got a loop that's not going to collapse. It's not going to change shape. And this is usually where people want to start. Usually on, you tie an end of a rope to something and then the other end of the rope to something else. And usually this is the knot people are looking for that they don't know. It's a bowline. 
you secure this end, on the other end, you would do the trucker's hitch. I was trying to figure out, can you make a bow line with a simple knot? First of all, I found the, uh, the overhand knot retrace that we already did. But I thought, well, what if I made a loop and what if I tied a knot around it right there? So, so I made a loop and then I came back and I tied that knot around it and then the loop is going to collapse when I pull on this. And now I have a nice solid line. So it's like a bow line, but it's not. Also, I found that if you take tension off the line, you can adjust it a little bit sometimes. Let's see here. Yeah, see, I'm getting a little bit of an adjustment and then putting tension back on the line and it's, it's solid again. You'd probably want to tie a, a stopper knot right here in the end. Just to be safe. But again, I would say use a bowline. I think it's a neat little trick. Um, you can tie a simple knot there, but bowline's better. Okay, next I'm going to talk about joining two pieces of rope. And this technique I learned from uh, a guy who was certified teaching a class to climb, go from climbing at the gym to climbing out in the wild. Um, and this is the technique he taught us, and it's just a simple overhand knot. And I'm going to use that pistol grip technique because I want to make a nice, clean knot with no twists. Because twists tend to make your knots weaker, and they're more likely to be a point of failure. And if it's a nice clean smooth knot then it's going to work better and it's going to hold hold more weight all you do is just tie a simple overhand knot and now these two ropes are joined now don't stop here this knot can roll over just like the the slip knot i was showing you earlier so the trick is you tie a backup knot so it has nowhere to go so if you ever use something like this for climbing things to look for are long tail you're looking for like six inches or more and a, a stopper knot so now when real weight gets put on this like if a, a 200 pound guy you know slips and falls a foot and a half and puts all that weight on this line and this this knot's not going to roll over and if it starts to roll over it's going to hit this stopper knot so that's an easy way to put two pieces of rope to join two pieces of rope and that's called a bend by the way so this is a this is a type of bend what's nice about this bend is that if you look it's flat on the bottom so when you're pulling this rope let's, see, let's try one of these so when you're pulling on this rope it's going to come up around and it it naturally falls to the flatter side when you Right, so it's less likely to get stuck on things when dragging across them because it'll just roll itself over and, and keep going. So that's why this is not as specifically useful for rock climbing. All right, here's another way to join two ropes together. Again, this is called a bend. And what, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this rope and we're gonna tie a knot on that one. We're gonna take this rope and tie a knot to that one. So here's our first one. So you can see that I've just tied it with a knot to the black rope. This, this material is called jute. This, so I'm going to refer to this as the jute and this as the black rope. So tie it, leave a long tail. Now do the other side. Tie the black rope to the jute. There you go. So now they're both tied to each other. And they've both got a nice long tail. And when you pull, they slip because these are slip knots, right? And they're going to slip until they hit each other. And then they're going to tighten and that you saw there they kind of rolled a little bit while I tightened it which is why you want to leave this long loop or sorry this long tail and if you're worried about them rolling over too far um, well they, sh they shouldn't they're not going to roll because of the way they're being pulled they're just going to get cinched down and get tightened in spot so there you go so now I've joined two pieces of rope and you can also when you untie them you can pull them apart the same way so you just back them up a little bit and then you can untie the knots this same technique can be used with the same rope. So I'm gonna put this down for a second. Let me put it here. Uh, and here, I have a necklace. So I've taken each end and tied it to the other end. And now I can slip like this, and I can change the size of the necklace. 
So that's another thing you can do with a simple knot is use it to make an adjustable necklace. Also, I made, I made a loop. Like sometimes it's useful to have a loop of rope and an easy way to do that is to just tie the ends to each other um, as if you were joining rope and then pull and get the two knots to touch each other just like this. And now you have a loop of rope. So that's something useful you can do with a simple knot. Another really great use for a simple knot is I, I did this, this trucker's hitch here and I've got all this excess. So just to clean up your excess, an easy thing you can do is just make a quick bundle and then just tie a knot around the bundle like that, right? And so now your rope is bundled, it's going to hang down, it's, but, it's, but it's out of the way. And again, I'm going to encourage you to, to not end things with knots, but to end them with a half hitch so that they're easy to undo later. So now the bundles just like that and I can pull this and the whole thing just comes undone. You can also take that a step further and attach it to this line. So you can make your bundle like this. And so now the rope is not hanging around. It's, it's attached to the line. And when you're ready to to take it up, take it down you just pull on that I also find a simple knot is good for bundling short lengths of rope so this rope is 15 feet so I'm gonna find the other end so now I've folded the rope in half and I'm just gonna fold the rope in half again so find the ends so folded it in half now I'm taking the center putting it all together I'm gonna fold it in half one more time so I've just folded the rope a few times, basically. And again, this is 15 foot of rope. And then I'm just gonna literally just make a knot. Right, and that's a very simple way to bundle rope so that when you come back to it later, it won't be in a big tangled mess. Um, it, I find that it only really works with short lengths of rope, um, which is great because when I look at the rope that I brought with me camping or something, I can usually see the way that it's bundled. And if it's bundled like this, I know it's a shorter piece of rope. You also don't have to fold it so many times. You, it could be a, you know, I don't know, a six foot piece of rope, fold it in half once or twice and you're done. So another way you can do it, um, I fold this 15 foot piece of rope twice in half. So it's a little longer that I'm playing with right now. And if you make one of these knots, but don't pull it all the way through and leave one end longer than the other. So now I've got it bundled and later on when I want to use it, I can just grab these two pieces and just pull. Another way to bundle rope with a simple knot is just to gather it and then just make a knot around here, which Honestly, I don't think it's the nicest way, but it does work pretty well. So that's nothing but a knot. I didn't pull all the way through, so I have a half hitch. And I can just pull this later and just unbundle it, and it'll just fall apart. Another knot that comes from the basic knot. So this is using that pistol grip I showed you. This is called an overhand knot. Right, and because it it goes over your hand, okay. If you do that same motion, but you make one, two loops, and then go through. Now you've created a double overhand knot. This is also known as a fisherman's knot. You can tell. Um, because it has these parallel lines on one side and an X on the other side. And this is a good stopper knot, right? It also works a lot like a regular knot. So, and I'm not going to get too far into it, but basically everything that we've done with the simple knot, you can do with a double overhand knot. So for example, I'm going to make a double overhand knot right here. Two and there 
we go. So I made a double overhand knot and it functions as a slip knot, right? And the difference is this knot doesn't roll over like the basic, the simple knot does. So if you, when you're making a simple knot, if you just make another loop, then boom, you've got your, your fisherman's knot. Um, this can also be used to join two pieces of rope together the way I showed you earlier. You just you tie one rope to, to, to one and one rope to the other. Just do the, the double overhand knot and when you pull tight, they're not gonna roll over. Again, leave a long tail. In fact, when I showed you that necklace earlier, these weren't knots. These are actually double overhand knots because I found the simple knot falls out. So specifically when doing one of these necklaces, double overhand knot, it's gonna hold it and not fall out. So there's everything you can do with this, the regular knot, you can do with this double overhand knot. So it's a good thing to know. The other knot that is one step away from a, a basic knot, if you make a loop and you pull through, you're gonna make a knot. If you make that loop and you put it through the front, you're gonna make a figure eight. Another way to make a figure eight is uh, you, you just twist this and pull through. So we also use this when climbing. Um, we do, remember that, uh, that retrace we did of the basic knot? Um, you re retrace this. So say you would go around your climbing harness and then you would just retrace back through where the rope already been. Oh. So figure eight retrace. I'm on a, a huge tangent here because this was supposed to be all about the basic knot. So that was everything I could come up with using a basic knot or using the beginnings of a basic knot to do things with a rope without getting into too many crazy knots, but also making them functional. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm going to say again and again and again, the thing that I use the most is a bowline and a trucker's hitch. If you're going to go camping, you should practice a bowline and a trucker's hitch. Thanks for sticking around. I don't know if that was super boring or interesting. Um, hopefully you found it interesting because I did. Um, the knot that I forgot to, to do is basically a quad anchor. So if you, uh, and I'm not gonna tie one right now because I don't even have the right type of rope, but if you're climbing and you need an anchor, I highly recommend doing a Google search on, or a YouTube search on a quad anchor. All it is is a bunch of rope. You make a loop out of it with uh, double overhand knots or fisherman knots, which we talked about in the video already. Uh, you pull them tight and then you fold it over a few times. You tie a couple simple knots and you have a quad anchor, um, which is something that a lot of people think is a hard thing to do, but it's not. It's super easy. So there you go. There's my little bonus knot at the end. So thanks for sticking around. Catch you next time.